Hi, I'm Jason Hudson from Tenzig Technology, and in this video we'll show you how to use the Repurpose Installer application to build your USB key. So you can boot your own legacy devices to either install Repurpose on the local hard disk, or if you prefer, just run Repurpose directly from the removable USB drive. It's up to you. First we need to insert a USB drive into our own Windows PC, as this is where the Repurpose installer application will place all the necessary image files needed to run Repurpose Live, or if you prefer to install on the legacy machine. When you first download the RPOS installer zip file, you'll need to unzip the contents to a local location on your own PC first, before you can start to build the USB key. Once we've unzipped the contents, we need to locate the rpostinstaller.exe and just run it. You'll then be presented with a screen that asks you to locate a device to place the installer content onto, and also a disk or ISO image that will be used later on to run or install our new repurpose operating system. If we click the drop down list, we only have one USB device attached to our local PC, so we'll select that. Now we need to select the ISO or disk image. So we click the select button and then locate our repurpose ISO image. This should be in the same folder that you just unzipped the installer content to. Highlight the ISO image, click open, and if you're happy with the device and image, click the start button. We can see a message presented informing us that all data on this device will be destroyed. At this point, please make sure that this is the correct device, as once you click OK, the process will format this USB drive. Remember, if you're not sure that this is the correct USB device, then click Cancel and just double check before you continue. Once we've clicked Start and clicked OK to continue, we can see that the USB drive is formatted and the ISO content is being copied to it. This process only takes a few minutes, but we'll just fast forward for the purpose of the demo. Once complete, the installer will display a message stating that the RPOS installer successfully formatted the drive and a green status bar showing ready. Just click the close button and eject the USB key from your own Windows PC to make sure the contents are safe and recorded. In this section, we're going to take our existing Windows 10 device and boot it up to run the previously built USB-based Repurpose OS in live mode. Insert the Repurpose USB key into your existing legacy device and then restart the machine. You'll need to make sure that your BIOS is set up to boot from USB media for this to happen. If it isn't already enabled, just go into the BIOS, set it to boot from USB devices, save the settings and then reboot again with your repurpose key still inserted. There's a good chance that our BIOS settings shown here will be different from your existing devices. So check with your system administrators for information on how to do this. Once the device begins to boot, we can see the Tenzig logo. And shortly after, the configuration wizard is displayed with the end user license agreement. Scroll down to the bottom of this and click agree. Next, we're presented with options to select the country in which we'll be using this repurpose device and also customize any keyboard specific settings. If we click next, then we can set the time zone, date, and an NTP server address if we're using one. If we click next, then the wizard completes and the repurposed desktop is displayed with the shutdown and control panel icons in the bottom left of the screen. In this mode, we're running the repurpose operating system live from the USB drive that we booted from. But if we wanted to, 
We also have the option to install repurpose from this USB device directly onto this physical hard disk so that we overwrite the existing legacy Windows 10 OS already installed. This gives us the benefit of being able to use this converted machine without booting and running from the USB key in the future. However, if after you've installed repurpose on the local hard disk, you can, if you wish, still boot and run it from the USB boot key. So you have many options at your disposal. In this section, we'll show you how to install repurpose locally on the hard drive of an existing legacy OS machine. And then we'll remove the USB boot key and watch repurpose boot up from that newly installed hard drive. If you've been running your repurpose OS directly from the USB key in live mode, then during this install process, everything previously created and saved to the key will be ported over to the local hard drive. This includes any connections and any setting changes that you might have made. It's really useful if you wanted to build your repurpose key with all your connections and settings, and then finally deploy and install to the hard drive of your existing legacy device, all in one go. On the desktop, we need to double click the icon named Installer in the top left, and we're presented with the repurpose installer screen that displays our physical disk to install on. Before you start the installer, just make sure that you want to overwrite the existing OS on this disk, as the installer will format the drive as part of this process. We just click the Install Now button, and the process will format the disk and begin copying all the necessary repurpose operating system content to the physical drive. One of the big benefits of installing from the USB key is that you can modify the content and reinstall your repurpose OS as many times as you want. Just boot from the key, make any changes to it, and then run the installer again. All existing content on the local hard drive is replaced with the complete content of the key. It's that simple. This install process only takes a few minutes, but for the purpose of the demo, we'll just skip forwards. And once finished, we can see the reboot message, asking if we want to restart the device. Remove the key first and click yes. As we want to boot from the local hard disk next time and not the USB key. Once repurpose is booted back up again, you'll notice that the installer icon has now been removed from the desktop. So we know that we're running from the local hard drive now as the USB key has been unplugged too. However, if we wanted to, we could plug the boot key back in, restart the client, and we'll be running live from the key, just as we were before. I hope you enjoyed the session, and remember, if you have any questions regarding this or related topics, then please contact your Tenzig team, or visit the website at www.tenzig.com. Thank you very much, and have a great day.